Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a mega tier list in the crypto gaming space. People are getting excited over this space, think that it's finally time, and I think they may be right. So let's go over these games I've got for you. The ultimate tier list. And by the way, if anybody comes after me in the comment section, this is gospel. This is it. What I've said, everybody must agree or else uh, an entire war on Twitter is going to be started, which is most likely what's going to happen here. But uh, we've got S to rip. You're either the best game on the planet or you're going to die. That's as simple as that. So I hope you enjoy this video. You guys know what to do. And let's get right into it. So first game I want to talk about is Avagachi. Now, Avagachi, if you're into Tamagotchi, if you're into taking care of your little pets, if you're into staking, if you're into the decentralized finance sector well then you're gonna like avagachi they're going ahead going over to arbitrum they're doing a bunch of different things and if you're big into staking uh, then you will do well but for me i literally don't care about that part of the game and so we're gonna put it like meh you know i'm pretty indifferent about this next one aurori tactics now rory is trying to do different things it's not just tactics they're coming out with adventures uh, this is a game where you can go ahead and and play with these little nefties. Think about Pokemon in the blockchain. That's exactly what this is. Now, my favorite part of the entire Aurori ecosystem is the fact that once Adventures comes out, you're actually going to be able to do wagers, which I think is super sick. And in terms of early bird projects in the crypto gaming space, Aurori has to be the one that's kind of held its ground the most and continues to kind of surprise the crypto space. So I'm going to put it on A because people are actually, you know, the whole play to earn thing where people are roasting play to earn for the longest of time. People are actually earning a pretty decent amount on Aurora right now. And I suspect that's because the team's doing a pretty good job. So, we're going to put it on pretty good, but not the best. Next one is Axie Doll. Now, Axie Doll comes from the Axie Infinity, Infinity Grant Program. They went ahead and built out a cool little games community run. I don't even think they even were a part of this grant program, were they? They just built out the game. Uh, this is one of those games where you start off and there's a bunch of, like, monsters kind of going after you. Uh, you kill them, you get experience, you level up, you get, like, an, a, a special weapon. They're using the Axie Infinity IP. I actually think... Okay, hot take here, but I actually... I think this game is pretty okay. Like, I, I don't think it's bad. It's pretty simple. It has a gameplay loop, and that's it. Sometimes that's as simple as it needs to be. Next game, Axie Infinity itself. Now, Axie Infinity... Uh, okay, okay. So Origin sucks. I'm gonna be just plain old here. I think Axie Infinity would be ripped here if we just talked about Origins. Now, if we're talking about a classic, which is V2, I don't think it's that bad. I know, this is insane here. But if we think about V2 classic, it's okay. It's like a poker simulator. It's not the worst thing in the world, and... If you're playing the game to play to earn on cheaper axes, it's definitely ripped here. But this this may be the most controversial one here. I don't think it's a ripped here. I think it's like whatever. People are going to be earning at the top. It's more skill to earn at this point. Axie Infinity Land has a pretty good APR if you kind of consider it the price right now. I'm just going to put a Mets here. It's not a great game, but I don't think it's dead just yet. Now, the next game I'd like to talk about is Big Time. Big Time is an MMORPG. You can play as several classes, and this is, of course, a game that is still in active development, but you can actually play with passes. You can go ahead, collect items, and trade that therein is kind of the idea with Big Time. Now, Big Time is a game where... My humble opinion here is the gameplay loop gets a little bit boring after quite some time. I'm sure this is something that they'll fix later on in the development cycle, but I, I've just never really felt like playing big time. Like, there's never been a moment in my life where I'm like, I really want to hop on big time. So, I, I think it's just like, meh, it's whatever. But I definitely don't think it's rip, right? It's definitely got a lot of potential. Next game, Blanco's Block Party. Now, Blanco's did very good for early birds they had some skins that they had gotten and they did awesome a blankos is a sandbox game essentially right you go ahead and you hop onto an arena usually built by a player whether it's racing whether it's you actually fighting someone a blankos block party offers all of that now blankos was cool because they got into epic games really early on i feel like for the most part, it hasn't had much development since. I know that they came out with another game. It was called, like, NFT Rivals. 
and NFT Rivals is a little bit better. I think Blankos as a game is kind of like whatever, though. I'm going to put that on Rip tier. Next game. So, we've got Champions Arena. This is a game on the Gala Games platform. There is the bias, right? But uh, Champions Arena is supposed to be similar to Summoner's War, where you go ahead and it's a strategy game. You've got heroes. The unique gameplay gimmick is that you have these little puzzle cards that level up and shoot and do a bunch of damage. So there is strategy there. <laughs> Champions Arena is supposed to come out in August. So we are in August right now. It should be out either when you're looking at this or in a couple weeks from now, Champions Arena is coming very, very soon. This game's polished. It's a really polished game. It's solid. It's mobile. I think it's a good game. Come after me, but I do think it's a definitely a pretty good game. So, next game, Champions Ascension. I know, we've changed here. So, Champions Ascension is a little bit of everything, right? It's supposed to be kind of like a metaverse. You know, they've got card games. They've got all kinds of stuff. They've got, like, this, like, drunken tavern where you just go ahead and you're drunk and you're supposed to find uh, the different little objectives that they've got. You get more drunk, becomes harder to control. I think that's cool. Uh, the main gameplay mechanic on Champions Ascension, which I think is cool, I actually like this, is there's a fighting game. It's a pretty well thought out fighting game. You're a gladiator in an arena. Isn't that awesome? You've got ultimate abilities, all that kind of stuff. They actually had recently an event where you had to fight this like giant monster and the first person to kill, I think it was called like Old Sally, won this really cool stuff. It's a pretty cool event. I do think I'm super bullish on the team on Champions Ascension. And so I would think I'm gonna put it on good. I suck at fighting games. There's your bias. So, next one, Dead Drop. Now, Dead Drop is being developed by Midnight Society. Uh, this is Dr. Disrespect Studio. That's an S tier, just automatically off of that. The gameplay loop is feels really nice. I actually liked the Snapshot 5. Right now, they're on Snapshot 6, where uh, they made a bunch of different updates. They added teams, all that kind of stuff. But my favorite part of Snapshot 5 was how bouncy it all felt. Like, people were just going all over the place like it was CSGO Source and bunny hopping and all these different things. I felt like the pacing was really cool. I didn't like Snapshot 6 as much, but I'm sure, I mean, it's Dr. Disrespect. This game's probably going to absolutely kill the space. So, next game, EV.io. EV.io has been around for a while. EV.io is an IO game. I mean, there was an IO craze where people would just go ahead and play on their browser. This is an FPS game. FPS, when it's, I think it's, yeah, it's an FPS game. And this game's pretty sick. I mean, it's simple. It's onboarding is even more simple. They have a really big esports scene, and I'm honestly pretty bullish on EV.io. I mean, it hasn't had a lot of development, so, you know, there is that. But in terms of just, like, playing the game, if you're trying to play something casual on a browser, I think EV.io is pretty cool. Next one is Forge Arena. Now, Forge Arena is one that is still changing, right? They're still working on what exactly they want to do, but think of it like... Halo 3 meets CSGO, that's Forge Arena. The gameplay loop is very fast, it feels satisfying. Forge Arena doesn't have a lot of DAU, so it's really hard to kind of find matches at the moment, but that's just most of Web3 Gaming, unfortunately. Forge Arena, I would put this higher, but I think for now we're just going to put it okay until they kind of figure out what they want to do. Next game is Gods Unchained. So Gods Unchained, okay. It's a game that's, it's like the legacy game of crypto. It's one of the first games out there. It's a c collectible card game. It's got, you know, Magic the Gathering talent on there. Massive, massive talent. I actually own Gods and Chain NFTs. I think Gods and Chain is really cool, but I just kind of got bored. I'm not a collectible card game guy. I'm not going to lie. But if you're into it, Gods and Chain, no kidding, is a really good game. I'd go as far as to say, I don't know if I'd put it at S tier, but it's, definitely high A tier if you're into the genre. I am not into collectible card games at all, but if you were, I do think it's an A tier. Next game is Grit. Now, this is Play Grit. It's also on the Gala Games store. I think Grit right now, as it stands, is a pretty okay game. That's the rating I'm going to give it. It's on Epic Games right now. The game's pretty not popular at the moment i'm sure once they figure out the light paper and the tokenomics on their second token which they said they're gonna do the game's gonna get a lot more popular but at the moment i do think that there are still quite a few bugs that do make it really annoying and i'm talking about the trains if gal is listening fix the trains please next game is alluvium now alluvium 
It's a lot. It's, it's like a three-peater. I could be here all day about Alluvium. They've got a lot going on, but pretty much think of an auto chess game like Team Fight Tactics, and then it just meets an open world exploration game like Pokemon. That's those two combined. And then you also combine a city building game and you put that on mobile and you call it Alluvium Zero. And then you also start talking about like these Alluvatar NFTs. That's Alluvium. Now, Alluvium's got a big vision, and they're also releasing pretty soon. You know, we are looking forward to Alluvium sometime in 2023 or 2024, so that's a pretty soon release. I think right now, if I'm 100% honest here, the open beta of... I think it's a closed beta still, or whatever, but it, it just was kind of boring. It felt barren, right? I'm worried for Alluvium because auto chess games are hard. It's not the most proven market. Remember, League of Legends IP is just going to blow up everything, so TFT kind of got success off there. But, I mean, there's a chance, so I'm going to put okay here. Next game is Mega Weapon. Now, Mega Weapon is one of my favorite crypto games. It really is. It's a game where you can hop on there. It's extremely fast-paced. It's an FPS game. It's got that arcade feel. If you collect dead body uh, remains, which are different colors depending on what mega weapon you want to get, you turn into this like ninja and then you turn into this magic mech that just destroys everyone. I think this game is really sick. I do think the game lasts a little bit long, but I'm sure as more players end up playing it, it's going to get better. This game is probably going to go top of A tier for me. I really like this game. I think they've got a wonderful, uh, you know, core mechanic in terms of a gameplay loop. And I am super excited to see where they end up going with Mega Weapon. So the next one is Metal Core. If you thought of mechs, think of mechs galore. I mean, this is space exploration mech bonanza. All that kind of stuff is what you're going to get from Metal Core. Now, Metal Core, I'm not sure when they're releasing. I'm pretty sure it's, it's somewhere in the realm of the same timeline, 2023, 2024. But I am a little bit confused here on my opinion on Metal Core. I'm not that excited for it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm, I think it's like, it's like, okay. It's definitely got a lot going on. And I'm sure that fans of space, space exploration and space fighting games, and they're into the whole like war thing. They're going to like it. I just didn't find it too enticing at the moment. The next game is Mirandus. Now, Mirandus is the flagship games of Gala Games. This is a game which is an MMORPG. If you die, then you really die. So I think it's going to be an interesting gambit here because you do need NFTs to actually get into the game. Uh, they're thinking of doing a rental system. I'm not 100% sold on the vision of Mirandus just yet, but it really is a grandiose vision. They're doing a metric ton so i'm very excited about mirandis the last playtest felt a lot better than the last one so the last last one so we'll see where it ends up going but for now i think it's pretty okay so the next game is my pet hooligan now my pet hooligan is um it's got really good music like it has a beast soundtrack a bunch of rappers going at it it's pretty much like you think of an fps game right well i, I don't even it's a third person shooter i'm pretty sure actually it's not a first person shooter it's a third person shooter where it's got a very arcade feel you've got a bunch of rabbits trying to go after each other and you know some of them are smoking bongs and stuff so very interesting uh, art that they ended up going for i'm really excited for my pet hooligan i might be the only one here but i think this one's easily an a tier now, the next game is called Nexus. This is by Playable. Uh, they're trying to do something something similar to Gala Games. They've got the Node ecosystem and all that kind of different stuff. This is a third-person shooter. It's trying to be a multiplayer online battle arena, a MOBA, uh, similar to League of Legends, except they've got shooters. I think at the moment, this game is going to come out next month. In terms of how it encapsulated me, I do think the game lasts just a little bit too long, so it's definitely not S tier, uh, but it was pretty okay. Like It wasn't that bad of an experience compared to most Web3 games. The next game is Panzer Dogs. Uh, this one is a pretty simple game. You go ahead and play as a tank, and you got to kill other tanks. Now, when I tried playing it, I couldn't find any players. I'm guessing they're running into a big DAU problem. So, I don't know what's going on there, but for now, I'm just going to slap it on the rip tier. Next game is Pegaxi. Okay, it goes on the rip tier. Uh, Shrapnel is the next game. Shrapnel is a first-person shooter. 
it's got a pretty cool gameplay mechanic where you go ahead and try to get uh, this special resource that is making everybody overpowered pretty much. I think Shrapnel is a cool game. People are really excited for Shrapnel. I haven't been convinced yet of how cool exactly Shrapnel is going to be. I mean, it just feels so slow, right? Like, Dead Drop felt really fast and it felt satisfying. Shrapnel, I I'm not sold on it just yet. So we're going to put it on the OK tier. Maybe they make it faster. Maybe they make it feel more satisfying. But for now, I I'm just not sold on it. Next game is Spider Tanks. Uh, Spider Tanks has a pretty high DAU. It's probably one of the best crypto games at the moment that are actually live. Spider Tanks is an easy S tier. I mean, the gameplay is just speaks for itself. The economy is self... Like, it's actually working. I, I mean, there's not a lot of crypto games that have working economies. So Spider Tanks is an easy S tier for me. I think... You know, if this doesn't end up going mobile, then Spider Tanks is probably like an A or a B tier. But if it actually goes mobile, easy S tier. Splinter Lines is the next game. So Splinter Lines is an OG game, like an OG OG game, kind of like Gods Unchained. Splinter Lines is an auto battler game. They are trying to do more things. You know, they've got their land gameplay as well, and a couple other things they're working on in terms of IP expansion. I actually kind of like Splinter Lines. I think Splinter Lines is doing a lot in terms of the actual game. I think it's pretty meh. But I am bullish on the overall ecosystem. Like, if we're starting to talk about, like, staking and we're starting to talk about land gameplay and all that kind of stuff, I do see it. Like, I see the vision in terms of DeFi and growth there. But in terms of just, like, the auto battler, I don't think it's the most fun thing in the world. Now, the next game is Star Atlas. This is trying to do something crazy. Like, it's trying to do the Star Citizen. It's trying to do something that no other game has ever done. A massive, massive space exploration game. Star Atlas, at the moment looks good it really does the runway isn't the best but the game looks very good i'm bullish as heck on star atlas so i'm looking forward to whenever that ends up releasing so next game stella fantasy so stella fantasy is doing something similar to genshin impact and tower of fantasy where you go ahead have your character with their special weapons and you just try to mess people up switch characters etc etc i think stella fantasy is i think it's okay i don't think it's that bad Next game is Superior. So Superior is also on Gala Games. Superior is a RPG game. Now, in terms of the soundtrack, it's all right. It's not terrible. I think that the superpowers are pretty cool. I like the gameplay mechanics there. The Superior is kind of struggling right now because of their NFTs. Like when they hopped on Steam, they're having a lot of trouble. But they make very consistent updates. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to the game. I think it's okay. A Synergy Lens is, it's like a farming simulator, ARPG farming simulator. You go ahead, fight people, you got skills too. Synergy Lens has been in development for quite some time. It looks a lot better, <laughs> like just, just straight up. It looks so much better than it looked before. But uh, I'm not really into farming simulators, so I'm putting it at C. Uh, next one is The Beacon. Now, The Beacon is... Think of, like, the old-timey pixelated games where you just do, like, a dungeon crawler. You'd hop on a dungeon, try to fight someone. Some people do speedruns on there, too. Maybe there's bosses. I like that. You know, I think the gameplay loop is fast. I think the idea of customizing your home is cool. And, I mean, I'm hopeful for this game, so I'm putting on an A. The next one is The Bornless. I've actually played this game at 3XP. The Bornless has, you know, it's got monsters, it's got horror, it's got all kinds of stuff. It's also a shooting game uh, where you go ahead and try to kill the monster and try to kill other players. There's a bunch of cool things. They've got a PvP mode where you fight each other, you get superpowers. I actually really like this game. I'm going to put it at good. The next one is The Fabled. Uh, this one's trying to do something similar uh, to, you know, those games where you'd go ahead and uh, try to fight massive bosses, but they're really hard to kill? Exactly. That's The Fabled. Now, in terms of the game, it kind of feels like most of the genre. I didn't find anything unique, so I, I thought it was just pretty meh. So next one is The Sandbox. This is literally a sandbox metaverse, right? That's the easiest way to explain it. They're doing a lot. You know, I initially put them on RAP on Crypto Stash's tier list. But if we're discounting the gameplay for a second and we're thinking about the partnerships and what the metaverse could potentially be, then the game's definitely not dead. Like, it's not a rip. Um, I would say it's okay. I mean, I, I wouldn't hop on the sandbox to play it. But if you're buying into the vision of, like, partnerships and all those different things, I think it's cool. It's all right. So, next one. The Walking Dead Empires, also in Gala Games, right? They're partnered with AMC Entertainment. So, The Walking Dead Empires, right now, it feels a little bit buggy, you know, right? 
Like, it's a zombie game. You go ahead, build your base up, gather resources. It takes a little bit too long to gather some of the rare resources. I, I'm not too excited about this game, but it's definitely, like, a game that will hop up on the tier list as it gets closer to release. Next game is State and Arena. All right, next game is Town Star. So, Town Star. Okay, hot take here. Town Star. It is in an interesting predicament because right now... I mean, if we're making the tier list today, I have to put it on RIP. But let's talk about it for a second. Because a town store is trying to revamp their economy. I don't know what they're trying to do exactly. But if they release... And by the way, this is for people out there that tell me that I don't care about town star. If they release like something like a town star forever, where we could actually build up our base over time, like a Sim City kind of thing, I would straight up put this at like, okay or good. But right now, obviously, we know that Townstar nodes aren't doing the greatest, and the economy is pretty dead at the moment. So, I mean, literally, it's RIP. Next game is Undead Blocks. So, Undead Blocks, think of Call of Duty Zombies, and think of it on one map. That's Undead Blocks. I think it's meh. Next game is Floki's Valhalla. So Floki's Valhalla, they're trying to do a metaverse. They've been doing it for quite some time. Um, the game looks a lot better than it looked initially. But, you know, it's still pretty meh in its development cycle. I'm sure it'll look better when they actually go through with it. Next game, Wagme Defense. So Wagme looked terrible when it first came out. Like, dude, I was like, I was not about it. And nowadays, it it's okay. I mean, it's a tower defense game. They're trying to do the whole Clash Royale thing where you've got towers and you got cars and you upgrade them over time. Uh, apparently, it pumped a lot, but in terms of a game, I still think it's pretty meh. Now, the last game I want to talk about is Wildcard. Now, Wildcard looks really cool. It is an arena game. You've got an arena where you go against someone else. You've got goalposts. You've got an energy system. you got to get cards out there and try to kill others. You've got an ultimate. I mean, the guy, Balder or whatever, just literally turns into a giant gorilla. And you could go ahead and slap people. I think that's trash, by the way. It's unbalanced right now. Uh, you know, they are going to console and they're going to PC. So that's cool. It's pretty unique for the space. I'm, uh, I'm not too hyped about the imbalance right now though so in terms of where it is at the moment i'm gonna slap it uh, probably like middle of a tier I, I think that's a fair assessment and so that's gonna conclude the tier list i hope you enjoyed this video it took me quite some time to gather all this information i had to play through all these games so god bless classy but i hope you enjoyed this video till the next time also let me know your thoughts in the comment section which one would you roast and which one do you put an s tier until the next time stay classy and that's all